So Tom, as I mentioned, is SEO specialist at Domain, um, interested in the intersection between uh, data and SEO. He's going to do a presentation on why in-house SEO should learn SQL and Python. So please give a round of applause for Tom. Thanks, Jamie. Uh, so my name's Tom. I work at Domain as an SEO. Uh, most of my days are just around working with product and engineering to make sure that SEO is implemented within their sprint cycles. Uh, tonight I'm going to talk about why SEOs should learn SQL and Python. So I did stalk you all on LinkedIn. I uh, hope that's okay. But I did this using Python. Uh, so here's a little demo. So basically I'm going to the meetup page uh, finding your profile on the meetup, going to LinkedIn, and scraping your job title uh, and company. So basically, I know that you're working at the following companies. So we've got a lot. Of, we've got a big group in the room. Uh, lots of different industries. I also know that you're working in the following roles. So 33% is in digital marketing. 17% in marketing, only 11% in SEO, that surprised me. 8% uh, growth and 3% in content and product. So I decided I'd rename my talk to be a bit more appealing to everyone in the room. So now it's why SEOs, digital marketers, marketers, growth marketers, content managers, product people should all learn SQL and Python. I guess the point I'm trying to make is that data is powerful in 2019. Uh, this little program took me 10 minutes to develop and now I sort of understand who my audience is for the talk. Uh, the amount of data that we're dealing with is growing rapidly every year. If I pull one stat off this slide, uh, Google's getting over 4 million searches every minute and that's data getting sent to companies like yours and mine in the form of organic sessions, events, conversions and more. So I guess the amount of data we have is huge. The average company has 163 terabytes of data, and the tools that we're using to analyze this are just not the best available. So I guess that brings me to my point that Excel sucks with big data. Excel proficiency is the core requirement for most digital marketing roles, and that's really not okay with me, because <laughs> Excel is not a, really a great tool for analyzing big data. So you might be thinking, like, what's wrong with Excel? Well, I do believe it's good. It has its specific use cases. But uh, the big limitation is that you can only have one million rows per workbook. And that's just not enough when we're working with big SEO and marketing data. If you think about log files, Google Analytics, crawl data, backlink auditing, all of these data sets are easily going to surpass one million rows pretty quickly. So if you think about opening an Excel workbook with one of these data sets, the reality is if you get to more than you know, a couple of hundred thousand rows, Excel's really not going to handle that. I'm pretty sure everyone in the room has had Excel like just pretty much lag or crash or completely bring down your computer. So I guess tonight I'm sort of here to inspire you to ditch your Excel spreadsheets and start learning SQL and Python. I say start because it's not going to happen overnight. I don't expect you to go into work tomorrow or someone in your team to just go and uninstall Excel. Uh, but it's a bit of a process, but it will be worth it. So let me tell you a quick story about my journey learning SQL and Python. Uh, I'm just an average marketer. I went to uni. I studied marketing, then started working in the industry. But over the last 14 months, I've learned SQL and Python to the point where I'm sort of using it every day at work. So if I can do it, you or someone in your team can do it as well. Oops. So I guess by the end of this talk, I'm hoping that all of you are sort of looking over your shoulder at the possibility that SQL and Python can bring to your work. So we know that like crawling, indexing, rendering, ranking, they're all the fundamentals of how SEO and Google work. 
Uh, and in this talk, I've put together a few examples of how I've solved real crawling and indexing challenges at domain with SQL and Python. So let's start with SQL. If you don't know what SQL is, it's the language used for extracting and analyzing data that's stored in databases. Really, the beauty of SQL is in the readability of the syntax. So here's an example of filtering data in SQL up here on your right and in a Google Sheet on your left. You don't even really need to understand SQL to understand that what we're saying there is select all the columns from a table where a column equals some value. And hopefully this example highlights the ease it is to learn this language. So a common task for SEOs to do is to perform some analysis on your log files. Ultimately, we're trying to uncover any blockers to Googlebot crawling your website. So at Domain, over the last uh, two years for one of our web properties, and this is one of the smaller properties, uh, we had 264 million hits from Googlebot. How would you analyze 264 million hits in Excel? You simply can't. You're gonna need to sample that data, and that's probably gonna lead to some bad decision making. If you have no idea what I'm talking about when I say a server log file, here's sort of what it looks like. So you have a date and timestamp of the request, you'll have an IP address of the bot, which can be, you know, it can be a human also, uh, the status code that you return, your server returns to the user, and the user agent string, and also the file or resource that uh, someone's requested. Logs are really powerful. Uh, you can use them to really understand what Google's doing on your website and ultimately help them crawl it. So if you're not using them, you really should. Even our pal from Google, John Mueller, I'm sure you're all aware of this guy, he really reckons logs are underrated, so you should definitely give it a go. One of the big advantages of SQL, just like Excel, is it allows you to wrangle, wrangle data at scale. So, you know, things like aggregate functions, also conditionals, and you can create new columns to make your data easier to digest. So an example from our domain, we take on every hit, and this is on over 260 million hits, we categorize that into a page template, such as like, is it a search or is it a property listing? We also, within that, we categorize it into, is it rent or sale? We pass the bot type into something that is more human readable. So is it a smartphone bot, a desktop bot, a video, image, so on. We also, based on a number of predetermined conditions, try to identify if that hit is in fact a wasted hit or you know, one that we actually want. So based on this data set, we were able to uncover that over 50% of Googlebot hits were to pages that just didn't generate any revenue for the business. So we used this data set to monitor what Google was doing and as we made optimizations to try and improve Googlebot from, prevent them from crawling those URLs that aren't generating revenue. And as you can see over the last five months, we brought that to well under 8%. And this data set is powered by like 240 million rows, so it's really cool. The second insight was that 60% of Googlebot hits were wasted on URLs that were generating under 5% of our total organic search traffic. To get this insight, we needed to use Google Analytics data. So the database that's storing the Google Analytics data is containing over 690 million rows. So now we're working with almost one billion rows without any sampling. So this is really the power that SQL can bring to your analysis. Again, we monitored Googlebot's hit as we made changes to try and prevent Google crawling those URLs that aren't generating traffic. And as you can see, we've brought that down to under 5% of total requests over the last five months. And all of this has sort of resulted in a 30% increase year on year to our core search funnel, which is a really good result. So this data set we use for a bunch of things. So whenever we're rolling out changes on the site, we're monitoring what Google's doing. So here's another example. We recently did a large URL migration that went across multiple templates. And as you can see, over the 10 months, Google's slowly started crawling the new URLs to the point in August where almost 90% of all requests 
uh, uh, to the new URLs. And this data set, again, is powered by like 240 million rows, so really powerful. So recently I was running a SQL workshop with one of our new colleagues that joined and something she said to me sort of stuck with me as a good takeaway for the talk for everyone here. So she was like, so SQL is just basically like Excel on steroids, right? And yeah, that's pretty much it. SQL is really going to power the ability for you or someone in your team to sort of supercharge your data analysis. But SQL does have its limitations. Ultimately, SQL wasn't designed to extract data from external sources such as web scraping or APIs. And this is where Python can become really powerful. So why should you choose Python as your programming language? Well, there's a few reasons. The first is that Python is growing rapidly in popularity, which means there's a massive online community out there ready to sort of help you learn. The second, shout out to Jamie, uh, <laughs> is that Python's becoming a nice to have skill in digital marketing job ads. And as you can see here, when at Finder for a digital marketing manager, Python is preferred over Excel as a skill. And I expect in the next like three to five years that Python will just become mandatory. The third is that Python is really like the Swiss army knife of programming. It's probably not the best tool for the job, but it certainly can do everything. I've used Python like for a lot of things, like personally just managing finances at home, but also in a work context. So I'll run through a few examples. So you can use Python to analyze big data. So just like SQL, Python is like a lot more powerful than Excel and you can easily take your data sets into the hundreds of millions. You can also build tools to automate the boring stuff, such as like uh, stalking you all on LinkedIn. Also, you can access data from APIs. So as digital marketers, we're in tools all day. We're clicking around, filtering data, exporting that into a CSV. It's much easier just to get that straight from the API in the format you already want and ready to analyze. Also, I'm sure a lot of you are like extracting data on the web, such as like you want to get you know, what your competitor's prices are, or are your competitor publishing blog posts at a higher frequency than you? You can extract this data at scale just with scraping it with Python, and it's a hell of a lot easier. As SEOs, we're always checking the same things over and over and again. We're looking at like title tags, headings, pretty much all the things that Matt mentioned in his talk tonight. Rather than checking those yourself, you can build automated tests that check them on a daily basis or whenever your developers are releasing a new sprint. And you can check that, get an alert sent to you if anything's changed. And you can do a lot more, but we've only got 20 odd minutes tonight, so I'm gonna move on. The real power of Python is in the ability to build something that performs tasks that no tool on the market offers or just isn't affordable in terms of ROI. So I'm going to run through a quick case study of challenges that marketplaces face and how you can use that, uh, how you can use Python to solve it. So marketplaces like Domain, uh, Car Sales, Gumtree, eBay, they all have a similar problem, which is that new inventory is coming on and off the website every day, which results in indexing challenges. So how long, or how would you calculate the time it takes a new URL to go on the site to appear in Google's index? You can't use Screaming Frog. Common SEO tools like Ahrefs or SEMrush don't have a feature like this. The Google suite like Analytics and Search Console won't give you the granularity of data you need. And rank tracking tools are only taking rankings once per day. So the solution is to build something custom with Python. This is a real SEO challenge at Domain. So we have new properties that come on and off the market every single day, and making sure these new properties get indexed quickly is a real priority for the business. So how can we measure this so we can ultimately speed up the process? So first, you need a batch of new URLs that you can check if they're indexed. We need to check if they're indexed on Google multiple times per day. We need to store the data we're scraping from Google, and then we need to analyze that data. So here's a demo of the program in action. So basically it's taking a new list of URLs. 
we're going to Google once every five seconds, scraping that data, and then passing that data to understand if the URL is indexed or not, and then storing it in a log file that we can come back to later. So now that we have this data, we need to push it into our database, and then we can analyze it with SQL. So we're gonna to join together the data we've scraped from Google with our server log files and Google Analytics data. And now we can start to calculate metrics to track, such as how long does it take for a new URL to go live to Google indexing it within a small margin of error. So as we make our efforts to optimize how fast our, index, our new URLs are getting indexed and discovered, we can track this over time on a dashboard. So this is really handy. So I'm quickly gonna run through two more cool things you can do with Python. The, probably the best thing is that you can use people's code who are a hell of a lot smarter than you. One example of this is Facebook's data science team have outsourced, or sorry, open sourced, a library that allows you to forecast future results based on historical data. So you can use this library to fit a model with your SEO traffic and predict into the future what those sessions might look like. So here's an example of one of Domain's uh, web properties. So it's looking okay, so that's good. <laughs> Another thing that you can do is build custom tools. So I've built a tool that basically takes that standard log file and passes it into something that's ready for SEO analysis. And within a two minutes, it basically spits out a bunch of charts that I can just get stuck into. So you might be wondering, like, what can you do with Python? So I quickly thought of how you could identify some things to do in your day with Python. I've come up with four rules. These rules are not based on any research, so take them with a grain of salt. So if you're doing anything that's soul destroying and mind numbing, seriously, if you're not automating this, come on. If it's occurring at a regular cadence, like daily or weekly, and if it's something repetitive that follows the same process every single day, step by step, you really should be automating this. And obviously, if it's on in a digital environment, such as your local computer or in the browser, this is where Python excels. And I guarantee you that you can all think of some tasks that you're doing every day that fits into these four rules. And basically, what I'm saying is don't spend your time doing something a well-trained monkey could do. Seriously, use Python. So Python can do anything, like as we've covered, you can build custom tools, you can solve business challenges, and a lot more. But your only limitation is resources. Someone in your team or yourself needs to have these skills. So hopefully by now you're all sort of thinking, like sign me up, where do I learn SQL and Python? And if you are, that's awesome. I've got a little syllabus for how SQL, uh, sorry, how digital marketers can learn SQL and Python. So I would recommend you start with SQL. SQL is pretty easy and it'll give you a good introduction to coding. There's a bunch of online courses that you can take which will get you up to speed in a couple of weeks. Next, I would move on to the command line. The command line makes it a lot easier for you to utilize Python and also set up all the environments you need. I really wish I knew how to use the command line from day one because it would have saved me a lot of time. Next, you should learn Git and GitHub. Git and GitHub are probably not essential, but being able to store all your files on the cloud makes it much easier to sort of work from it from any computer. Also, if you want to give back to the community and share, share your code, this is the standard way to do it. Finally, once you've got these foundations, I'd recommend that you jump straight into Python. Uh, first of all, start using Python without using any packages or other people's code. Really understand the language, because when you're sort of copying and pasting from everywhere else, if you actually understand what you're doing, you can modify it to your use case. And finally, I'd recommend getting into all the Python packages. If there's anything you want to do, seriously, just Google it, and someone's already built it. You just need to tweak it a little bit for your use case. So that's my talk. Thanks for listening. If you want to learn Python or SQL, if you go to this link here, I've put a sort of a little syllabus with a bunch of different links to online courses and resources that you can follow. So thanks for listening.